Greetings everyone, my name is Gustavo Alberola and I work as a Cloud Integrations Developer at MuleSoft. In this occasion I will be explaining how to make a basic Mule Studio application using the NetSuite Cloud Connector. In order to build and run the application we are going to need download and install Mule Studio Community version or an Enterprise version, download the NetSuite Cloud Connector from Studio and have an account in NetSuite. Now I will show you the minimum requirements to use the connector against your NetSuite application. Go to the NetSuite site to the customer login. Inside go to Setup, Company, Enable Features. In here we are a subsection, okay, Suite Cloud. And in here we need to enable the Sweet Talk Web Service checkbox. Ensure that the checkbox is checked in. And then go to Setup, Integration, Web Service Preferences. Write the account ID. We are going to use this for the credentials. And then create a name, web service, role and the ID is the other parameter that we are going to use for our credentials. I already have my user created, you can create more than one and the same with another role. In this case check that ID is 15 inside 3 when the role changes. Create a new Mule application and then under the source main app Mule app that properties file, we are going to add these variables right here. You will populate them with your credentials to access the NetSuite account. Under global elements, create the NetSuite configuration. I already have the mine created, so I will show you my variables. Note that each variable has a dollar sign and is enclosed with braces. This is because it's using the variables defined in the that properties file. In the message flow section, we are going to build several flows. Mainly, we will work with customer records and customer payment records. We create a create and delete customer and create retrieve update and delete customer payment. Also I made uh, this file that represents all the paths that we are going to use. Check that all point from localhost 8081 user then user has create let also has payment and the payment has the four actions that we took previously the first flow is going to be create customer record first we add an HTTP endpoint to the host we use localhost to the port 8081 and to the path customer slash create next we add the NetSuite connector we are going to use the add record operation. For the name, use the same as the operation. It's a good practice. For the config reference, use the one that we create. Record type is going to be customer in this case. And for the attributes, we set them up with three values, company name, phone, and external ID. For the values, look that we are using a mule expression. In the expression, we can read message that inbound properties. This allows us to get the query parameters that we send to the HTTP endpoint. In this case, for this key, is going to find the customer ID parameter. And for the last, we use a set payload component 
the payload transformer to show a friendly message and in the last we use another mule expression to get the external ID from the result of the connector in this case the payload next we are going to define the delete customer flow again start with an HTTP endpoint in this case the path is customer delete add a NetSuite connector we are going to call the delete record operation configuration is the same and for the ID we are going to use another query parameter customer ID NetSuite understand this as an external ID an ID that we define outside NetSuite and the record type is going to be customer add uh, a set payload transformer to show a friendly message to the user next we are going to create the customer payment flow again start with an HTTP endpoint for the path customer slash payment slash create next add a NetSuite connector the operation in this case is going to be initialized for the ID again uh, we use a query parameter customer ID this ID is going to be external the record type is going to be a customer and the entity type that we are going to create is customer payment next add a Ruby transform we are going to add uh, the payment amount to the created customer payment obtain the amount from a query parameter payment amount the value is parsed into a float and the payment is established in the payload and in this case is a customer payment object next add another NetSuite connector we are going to use the add record objects operation for the record type is going to be of customer payment and we create a list because it is expecting a list but we only have one parameter so we set the first one to be the payload next we add another set payload transform again to show a friendly message to the user in this case the result of the add record object will return a list of objects that is because in the mule expression we are we are saying payload that get zero get the first element and from that we get the internal ID that is the ID that we are going to use to create, delete and update the payment next we are going to explain the update customer payment again at an HTTP endpoint the path is going to be customer slash payment slash update add a NetSuite connector in this case operation update record for the ID we get from a query parameter the ID type is internal and the record type is customer payment the properties that we are going to update in this case is payment again and we obtain it from another query parameter add another set payload transform to show a friendly message to the user the delete customer payment flow is much the same the path is customer slash payment slash delete the NetSuite connector then use the delete record operation for the ID we use a query parameter payment ID the type internal in the record type is customer payment add another set payload transform to show a friendly message to the user for the last floor we are going to create the retrieve customer payment the path is going to be customer slash payment slash retrieve add a NetSuite connector in this case use the operation get record for the ID again a query parameter payment ID of type internal and the record type is customer payment next add a set payload transform we are going to use another mule expression in this case to generate a map 
Note that the square brackets are two in this case. The first one is to enclose the mule expression, the second one is to enclose the map. For the keys, in this case, we use ID. The value is the get the internal ID from the payload. Also, we get the external ID. Again, the get external ID from the payload. And the payment amount, in this case, the object is a uh, customer payment and has a get payment method. In the end, use a uh, object to string transform to convert the map to a string readable way. Finally, we are going to use a catch exception strategy. And inside the strategy, we are going to add a set payload to show a message to the user. This is because when we call the get record, if the ID does not succeed, throw an exception. Let's go to your favorite browser. First, we are going to call the create customer flow. In this case, I use a mule customer as an ID. It says he created. Next, I am going to create the payment for that customer. Check that the customer ID is the same in the create customer. <coughs> now retrieves the payment ID seven zero zero four. Retrieve the created payment. Look that the amount is that they use in the create. Update the payment to one twenty. And next we are going to retrieve again the payment to check the update. Look that now is one twenty. Next delete the payment. Next we are going to retrieve the payment that it doesn't exist anymore. And as a result we are going to see the message that we define in the catch exception strategy. And for the last delete the created customer at the beginning. For detailed information on the NetSuite Cloud Connector operations, check the documentation available in the GitHub repository. There are also Mule School entries on the MuleSoft blog that are helpful for understanding Mule expressions or when interacting with other services. And now, related to Mule ESB, you can visit MuleSoft website where webinars and other documentation is available under the resources option. Thank you for watching.